Welcome, welcome back, family, to the huddle. This week, I got two amazing guests to dive into an amazing book. I got my friend Byron and Brandon to dive into Battle Cry, written by Jason Wilson. This book is truly amazing and impactful for the time that we in right now. And I want to just jump straight in and ask these fellas, what's their opinion, their perspective after going through this amazing book? Byron, first up. Uh, I, mean, I think the book was awesome, um, especially, like you said, with what's going on right now. I think it, it gives a, a introspective in the black men and uh, their emotions and allowing them to show those emotions. And I think right now it's a, I think with everything that's going on, it, it has given men a different opportunity to do that. And especially considering we haven't really had that platform yeah. or had the ability to do so. We just haven't had the time or anything. Um, so I think it's awesome. What about you, Brandon? Um, likewise, um, pretty much everything he said, but what it did for me, it really made me, uh, look at myself in the mirror yeah. as far as a man and how I've just been taught and thinking my whole life. So it gave me a good pers perspective and, you know, just ready to make some changes for real. And that was the crazy <laughs> part to me is when you look at it, it's like stepping back in time into our lives and how we were brought through. I mean, whether it's at home or school or environment. I mean, it kind of counteracts all of that. The perspective, but it gives us a different kind of voice moving into where we're going to in, in, the, in the present time. Um, I do want to add how crazy it was that this book came about because me and Brandon first talked about it. We was like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get into this book. We're going to dive into it. And we was like, no, be a good person to bring in. Byron. Nah, even before the book, remember, it was the clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The clip that you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we, you told me he had a book. And I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> into it. Then we was like, Byron, yo, we want to get you on, on the podcast. And Byron was like, hold on, what about this book? <laughs> Pulled out the same book. I was book. like, bro, you, yeah. is this the book? It was like, it was meant to crazy. be. And yeah. here we are. So let's dive in a, a, a little deeper on some of the concepts that uh, Jason gave to us. So there's this thing called a shadow mission. And when you heard it and you listened to him talk about what a shadow mission was, what did you get in, and where did you see it in your life, Brandon? Oh, you would just come on. <laughs> exactly. We're not ready for that. All right. So shadow mission is like, you feel like it's this, this purpose, this thing that you want to chase, that you want to go after, but you realize down the line that maybe it necessarily wasn't the end goal, the end purpose of your life. It was just a piece, but we have to make that shift away from the shadow mission. Something in your life, what did that look like? Um, that's been a few things, man, in my life. You know how we have these uh five to ten year plans, yeah. <laughs> and um, they just you know they're not what they're supposed to be. And uh, with him, he asked a lot of scripture, yeah. So I just you know refer back to that as far as you know what your plan is, as opposed to what God's plan is. So you know, um, as far as the shadow missions, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know one, I've had so many, um, being. Rich by 25, you yeah. know what I mean? That was a, a, a shadow mission because I wasn't doing the things to prepare myself yeah. to be rich by 25. I'm about you know to say, what, I mean? did you, what did you want to do to become rich? Like? Exactly. The goal is just to be rich. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you write down these things. Okay, this, this. Like, nah, I'm going to start a car wash. Okay, how I'm going to start a car wash? Okay, I need this. Nah, Toss that man. shadow mission. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I've had too many of those, man, to even go through for real yeah <laughs> what about you Byron? man i think my biggest and earliest one was like i'm gonna go pro yeah in what another one everything <laughs> <laughs> hey but you want the people that probably could though so that, so that was the scariest part because <laughs> well, no, yeah nobody made me focus yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying it was, <laughs> like especially when i look at kids now seeing them start to focus freshman sophomore year yeah, high school yeah even yeah like even earlier like you know when we go out and practice we see them kids coming out there practicing yeah i got a friend that trained seven year old at cornerback right that's like, crazy. Not, not football at cornerback that's, that's crazy. yeah and that's crazy because for us it was like you on my football when i was in the seventh grade yeah my seventh grade football coach said hey if you're on my football team i'm bringing all my athletes to my basketball team makes sense my my then they during basketball season they had a cross-country competition Bro, I never ran around a track oh more God. than one time. You ran cross country? It, 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 it died. It almost died <laughs> twice. Oh, yeah, you know, bro, <laughs> almost died twice. Really? So it was, and then 
then we also ran track yeah and played baseball yeah we never stopped you know what i'm saying and then when you go to your neighborhood you still play neighborhood sports still playing ball. so nobody ever said hey man you should stop and focus on this because you could be real good at this yeah it was like hey you're an athlete son at what age do you feel like students or young people should start focusing on on whatever path that they feel like is for them um honestly uh freshman sophomore year maybe um just in my opinion yeah. i think that's when you start to bring it in a little bit more um, I, I understand you still want to compete, um, but I think at that age, you you start to focus in just so you can start to give that your energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to play football, you want to start to get bigger and stronger and faster. If you're going to play basketball, you need to be in the gym getting your shots up. Yeah. Um, you don't want to try to, you don't want to be doing everything. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one of the things in this book, <clears throat> rest. Heck yeah, man. You still got to have time to rest. <laughs> Like when you when you're 15, 16 years old, you don't even know how to rest, bro. You just go. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we, I know for me, I literally went from football into basketball season, into track, and then they said, "Hey, can you come pitch a couple of games?" You know? Cross country, man. That, bro, I, like, read, this man that was ran cross high. country. That was, that, was, <laughs> that was definitely junior high. When we got to high school, wow. it was like it was like, bro, if I had to go more than one time around the track, that was it. I was gonna fake yeah. an injury. <laughs> like I, I was gonna fake a whole injury just yeah. to not do it. But like I think that's when you start to kind of focus in. Like, but like I said, we were athletes. Yeah. So it was like, let's get the best athletes out here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. for me, because uh, still talking about shadow missions. Like, I wanted to be a football player. Like, even when I never, before I even got a chance to play, I wanted to be a football player. And I thought that was my thing. Like, I love Barry Sanders. I wanted to be like Jerry Rice. Like, that was me. And as I went down the journey, a lot of things happened in a positive way to help me learn who I, who I could be and who I was. But at the end of the day, when it was all said and done, I had to accept that that necessarily wasn't my lifetime mission. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it was a shadow mission, and I learned and gained so much from it. But at the same time, it prepared me for what I feel like is my, my mission now. And that's that's where Change the Cleats was, was birthed from. And look, we might get 10 years down the line, we're like, you know what, that was a shadow mission. Right, absolutely. But I do feel like we do have to go and then just understand that it may not be your end-all, be-all. It's but the learn, process. Yeah, always. It's always about the journey mm-hmm. and the process. Get everything you can from that path, but be okay to pivot. Yeah, because you, you can take those tools with you. You take so much from that journey. You just put stuff in your pockets. Exactly. Until you Fill get in your there. toolbox. Yeah. So you said it should start around uh, ninth, tenth grade. Maybe not. Yeah. What time grade. does it actually start, though? Do you think? Because that's what time is, you said it's supposed to. Yeah. But what time do you, does it actually in start? In real life. Yeah. I mean, to, for for me, I would say it was actually in college. Like exactly. I was, I was still. Exactly. I mean, I was, I was playing soccer in high school. I was playing football in high school. I was doing all these things, trying, trying to figure out who I was. But in college, it was like funny part is though. Let's go. I yeah. thought I knew in high school. Yeah. Until I got to college. Like yeah. nah, dude. Yeah. I, I didn't know. Shit. Like, like, like yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. He said, "Come here." No, nah, for real. But yeah. Until you meet a different type of athlete, and Man. then you realize, like, oh, so. It was a- Every city had a me, but see, ten me. And then what makes it even worse is because like what me and Wallace shared, it came so easy for me. Yeah. Like when people was just doing so much at, like for football and practicing, and I'm like, bro, I don't have to do all that. <laughs> like for what? Yeah. But then you go you to know, the next to level. To the next level, and it came so easy for me. But the people that it still came easy for, and they put and the work in. The work. Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. The the, oh, the coaches' sons, <laughs> the kids who been playing football and only football. Yeah. So then you saw them doing stuff. You like, bro, I wasn't doing that. I think it brings in another piece to to young people that to just listen. Like I was listening to Inky this morning, and he was talking about obedience. But uh, and uh, that being the most essential piece to our youth, and is to listen. To somebody telling you, you need to work at this just because you're the best. Like my thing with soccer, man, soccer, I can step on any field, anywhere and be the best thing on there. That's how I feel. But I never really juggled. I never really did the extra work. And it started to show once I started getting toward the end of high school. I was still a better athlete, but technically I couldn't hang with them boys 
but it's because I didn't put in the work. But I found something that I was willing to put in the work for. It was football. And I saw the progression, the same progression they saw in soccer. I saw it in football because yeah. I was putting my intention, my work, my work into it. You feel me? I feel that. Something else that that Jason goes into is uh something that I, I see all the time. It's hey Brandon man, you the man. And then you throw it back at nah, bro. You you the man, dog. Yeah, you yeah, you man. the dog. Accepting affirmations. Why is it so hard for us to accept affirmations? Just just let it rest on you. Why is that so hard? Man, <laughs> I don't know. But and I didn't even know that it was a problem yeah. until I read the book. Like I I don't. Why do we do that though? Like I I really mm -hmm, don't understand. But. That is something I'm changing. Yeah. And I was like at the beginning I was saying like it helped me look myself in the mirror and yeah. change a lot of things. But yeah, I don't I don't understand why. Why is it a problem? But the, the thing that he said in the book was like uh not hearing it when you were young. Yeah. Made it now as an adult, when you do get it, you don't even really know how to handle it. Yeah. So you deflect it back at the person who gave it to you. So it's like Bro, you clean today. Like, nah, bro, that's you. See, to me, like, and, and I had I had mixed opinions on, on that statement because what it feels like when somebody gives me a compliment, like, if I if I know, all right, I made a good play, it's like you feeding my ego, and that's something I'm fighting against. Me too. And I look at it like it's because I've always been so humble. Like, I don't know how to take that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Good job, Brandon. Like, ah, oh, that was all right. Like, I, and I feel like king of that. I am, and I feel like because I feel like it's because that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, cause I am. Yeah. I'm supposed to make this play. I'm supposed to be good to my wife. I'm supposed to feed my kids. Right. I'm supposed to, you know, supply everything that I that I need for my family. So to hear, man, that's a good job. You're doing a great job at being a dad. Being a great job at being an athlete. It's like. All right, like, it, you know, it's just because what I'm supposed to do. Right. But we should accept that more because, you know, you are doing a good job. I see, and that's what brought the next part is like, yeah, you're supposed to, and yeah, I don't want to I don't want to uh, empower my ego, but at the same time, all that is is love being passed around. Yeah. And I need to be able to accept that love. And us deflecting it, even though it's as, as minor as, nah, bro, you, it's, it's on you, it's deflecting the love that somebody's trying to present to us. Yeah. Uh. That's where, you know but, where but, but, okay, go ahead. One of the things that I, I struggle with is a person's level of being genuine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, not necessarily maybe not deflect, but like what Brandon was saying, like, bro, like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, you, I, I struggle with a person being genuine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I didn't come from a household where, like you were saying, there was love being thrown around. Like my household didn't throw, the, the, the household I came from was like, hey, there's some food in there. Bet. She loved me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, clearly, she loves me. Dude. My mama loved me. I have hey, a little look. more love than that. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Good. No, so, I, so that's like baseline. But, yeah, but it, yeah, yeah. it made us understand, like, they they did for us. Right. So we knew that they loved they us. Loved right? Yeah. Because we I grew up around kids who didn't necessarily have. Yeah. And it didn't necessarily mean that their parents didn't love them. But it made me feel like my love me a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll go a little bit harder. They'll do what they got to do. So, I didn't come from a household that where we verbally said it, right. but it was shown all the time, right? So, when I got older and I heard it, I was like, yeah, no. Nah. I don't even know if that's genuine. <laughs> like, I, but you bring this food, I that's might, I might I got, believe I it. I will say it, it is easier because I'm just thinking back now to, like, singing at church, right? Yeah. Like, if my peer was to tell me, and it's always the peers, because yeah. if it's someone older, I accept it. Oh, thank you. You know, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, I really appreciate you recognizing me. But a peer, like you, hey, man, whatever. Like, good, whatever. Like, yeah. Get your ass on. Man. All right, appreciate it. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? And it's, it's hard to take it, I think, from a peer. But why is that? Like, if we if we in the same space, like, I understand if somebody just saw you on stage and walked up and was like, hey, good job. But if I'm a singer, and we both we both in the same space, we both yeah. play football, and I come tell you, bro, that was a dope play. Or that was, man, you hit that note. Yeah. But you know I, I know the, the significance of what you did. Yeah. You still can't take that? Yeah. I, I think. Sometimes. Yeah. Because I will say, even with us playing now, 
Sometimes you know I will be like, all right, you know I appreciate that. Yeah. Because it it especially the plays that nobody, nobody else saw. Look, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like all right. Yeah. But the stuff that I think also those type of things like yes, like if you go above and beyond for something yeah. and you get the recognition, it's easier to accept. Yeah. But the regular things, I just feel like this my is humble true. self is just like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like you can't, I can't tell you good catch and you're wide open. You know what I mean? I mean I can, cause it was a good catch. But, but what do you say from that? Like appreciate. It. Okay. No, I mean you're, you're, you're supposed to. You're supposed to do. But hey, you know, ain't that's what you're supposed you to know do. Me, bro, I'd be like appreciate you, dog. <laughs> hey, look, it's only because you never. I never said that. Look, yeah, I get that. That's bad but, example. Yeah, bad yeah. example. But it also kind of comes. It, it also because we came from a generation where we were supposed to do it. Right. So we weren't necessarily patted on the back that for way, doing what yeah. we were supposed to do. Yeah. Like we didn't get the trophies for showing up. You got the trophies. <laughs> but, no. you, but you got the trophies but for working, doing for work. Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely right, yeah, dude. Yeah. Because with my kids now, cleaning up their room. I'm giving awards like, man, hey, boy, you did good cleaning up your room. I like it, you know. Yeah. Hey, baby, hey, you did good, you know, whatever. I didn't, yeah. I'm because I was supposed to. Right. So up that makes leave. a lot of sense. You can clean up or leave. <laughs> <laughs> it was, hey, it was you just, get, when you get to the point where you don't clean up, listen, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that it, makes it a was, lot of sense. We weren't praised for those things because, like, he, and another thing you said in the book, our parents and grandparents were only three or four generations removed from being slaves. Yeah. That's right? Bad. So the things that they saw, the things that they went through, made them, it gave them tougher skin. Yeah. Right? So that tougher skin just kind of passed down. It got softer. It, it's kind of like with a lot of stuff now. Like, we treat our kids, like you you with your kids, right? Like, you give your kid, you, I'm sure you give them a little bit of a say-so. Like, they can tell you what they want to yeah. eat, things of that yeah. nature. And they can come to you. The conversation. Yeah. You know that and, and they can come to you and tell you how they feel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't know what feelings were outside of physical hurt. Damn. And being able to express that to our See, parents. Gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, make me take it a little deeper. That's yeah, that's what, deep. like, you couldn't go to your parent and be like, look, I just, like, I don't want to do this. Or, or I don't feel comfortable with this. Yeah, nah. And, what? And that's terrible when Bruh. you think about it. But why? Because I always, I always look at, I, I got a, a young nephew, and he has is very opinionated. But in my mind, a baby has no idea about this world at all. He does know about himself, but he has no idea about this world. If I tell you to eat vegetables, you eat vegetables, even if you don't feel like eating them. If I tell you to go do some push-ups when you get to that point, I'm telling you that to help prepare you physically for the world. But, but little kids don't know what's good for them. So why do we give them the option? And I'd like to hear that from a father. Because I, I, I get opinions from my kids because I want to know why. Yeah. Right? So if I tell him to eat his vegetables and he say, Daddy, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I want to know why. Yeah. Well, why don't you want to? Well, they're nasty. All right, cool. So now maybe I can get a different vegetable that he may like. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like instead of just forcing it on him because that was our problem. Now exactly he's scared to come to me. With any problem, because it's like he's just gonna make me do it anyway. Exactly. So it makes me more open as a parent when I like to hear why. You know, you know what I mean? I don't like to hear it all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. in some cases, you know, I do welcome it. A part of that is because we're not so far removed from our childhoods. True. And and I I know for me when I was little, you if I got <laughs> if I got spanked, bro, I used to be like, when I get older. And I have kids. I ain't gonna spend them. Ain't no one with my kids. That's you know crazy, what I'm saying? Because me, I was like, when I get older, I'm beating the heck out of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and, and even in that, I still understood for some things it had to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there has to be a level of discipline. But I think we just weren't so far removed from it that we remember how, like, we felt like I didn't have, like you said, we, I didn't have an opinion. I didn't get to voice my opinion. So yeah. it's like, all right, opinion, with, with my right. kids, like. Okay, well, why, like you said, well, why don't you want to eat your vegetables? Well, I just don't like them. Like, I don't like how they taste. Cool. So you fix that, right? And I let him know why he should also. Exactly. Or why she should. So yeah. for us, it was because I said so. Yeah. And then. The end. See, and exactly. And now, when I tell him why, you know, strong like Popeye, fast like Sonic. That's his thing. Dad, if I eat these, I'm going to be fast like Sonic. Yeah. So I could be going to do something else. He bring it. Dad, I ate all my vegetables. Cool, you know meat, but cool, you know you <laughs> ate your vegetables. You right. know what I mean. Yeah. So you know it, it it makes them 
more proud and it helps, you know, it makes me want to do like, you know, celebrate them even more. So I feel like it's another piece that is going to affect them once they get older because I like he said in the book, especially us as black men have trouble with communication. And part of that is because a lot of times we didn't have a voice growing up. So I don't know how to express how I feel or why I feel or what's going on with me. It's just like now I'm a, an adult and you want me to tell me, tell you what's going on inside of this, but I'm not trained to do that. I will say this though, and I don't know where I get it from or how it started. Yeah. But let's just say me and you have a conversation, right? Yeah. If I don't tell you how I feel, it's going to bother me. So me as, and I don't know when this came about, probably around high school maybe. Never really with my parents, but everybody else got it. And that's probably why. Because right. I couldn't do it that's at home, but you don't hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if we have a conversation and I don't like what you said to me, if I don't say something to you, it's going to bro, it's yeah, going to hurt about that me in the book too. even more. He definitely he talk, did. Yeah, he talked about that. And, you know, I don't, I think that's a good thing. I think it's great. You know what I mean? Because as long as you know how to communicate. Now that's 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 a that's a different part. Yeah. You know, like it's and when. I'm working on that. I'm, work, I'm working on that. I seen it, and I had to go grab it. Hey, come here, bro. Let's talk. Yeah, to me. yeah, yeah. I'm working on that. Yeah. And it's 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 a little weird because I get to. It's it's weird. It's not like I'm not angry, but I get to laugh, and then that's a problem. You know what I mean? But like, you know, you saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I yeah, so but I do think. That's a good thing, like, to be able to express yourself, but like you said, it's how to do it. Yeah. Which is, you know, what I, I, we need to work on. But like you were saying, like, not having that voice, especially to express emotions. Yeah. Uh, because it was suppressed, whether it was by the world or even by our parents. Like, especially as boys. Like yeah. I said, like, you fought for, for us when we were little. That was when that whole warrior thing came in, right? So it was like you fell off your bike, even with your mom. Like, your mom was like, don't cry. Yeah. Like, so, be a man. Yeah, be a man. So, so now, don't come to me with your emotions. Yeah. Suppress it and keep moving. If you really think about what your dad did growing up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, like it may have been a job he absolutely hated. Hmm. He suppressed it. He went, went to work because he had to feed his kids, yeah. feed his family, right? Our grandparents did the same thing, but that was because they three, four generations removed from slavery. Yeah. So it was like, keep your head down, work, keep moving, do what you got to do. And because everything, to feed, had, to feed your family, yeah. to take care of what you got to take care of. So that yeah. was how that went, man. And I think now we're that, we're different because we have a voice. We know how to maneuver through things and we know how to express those emotions, especially when we're angry and frustrated. And hey, we'll walk away from something in a heartbeat. Like quick, because if you think about our parents worked at jobs 20, 25 years, <laughs> right? They work at a job 20, 25 years, they get a watch, they retire. Bro, we work at jobs three years, and we like, what the market look like? They paying 100k, I'm out. I'm out. Two years, they got 120k, I'm out. It, it's not the same, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like we may not even look at that as the same, but that's expressing yourself. That's hey, I know my worth. You're not paying me what I feel like I'm worth. Hey. I'm out. <laughs> Period. That was, that was and look, recent. And then look, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'll come back to you if you pay me more. If, if, if you show me that you yeah. recognize my worth, hey, now, hey, I'll come hey, back. Hey, but you know what to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So, so that's that's literally. I think that's that's part. Of, like you said, like back in the day, they went to work and they dealt with everything for the essentials to feed, to house, to do whatever. And our mental health wasn't one of those essential things. But now it's becoming that in society. Right. And we're as we're diving into what mental health, mental strength looks like, it's giving us options. Right. Really, to, to oh, I can interpret this this way and give myself this option. Before, it was like, this is just all it takes to, to get the bare minimum. Right. And now it's like, oh, it's more out there. And I can figure out how to get there. And that's, I guess it starts from the voice that you give a child. Right. Yeah. So something that you touched on that is really like, I guess the source or the core of this book is that uh, courageous transparent, transparency is being being vulnerable. Yeah. And especially as, as men, 
I don't know if we scared to do it or we just we just don't do it. We don't open up and give our like the the time that we actually got the closest was when we had a truly vulnerable conversation. And then the same thing with me and you we in a car, we had a vulnerable conversation, but vulnerability is connectivity to me. When you were growing up, were you allowed to be vulnerable and what did it feel what did it feel like? And not not just your parents like in in your comings and goings at school and whatever. No way. Not at all. Yeah. No. No. Nothing nothing soft. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. Not at all. Um outside I, I got more love inside, you know, that still wasn't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't be as vulnerable because I wasn't comfortable. But outside definitely not. No. You gon yeah, you know how that goes, man. You getting talked about. Gay. That was you know, I know you can't say that now, but that used to be a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just nah. Not at all. And I think just because of how everybody else around the neighborhood was raised also. Yeah. So it was more of a community thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I couldn't show it even if I wanted to be. Like if I wanted to cry, I had to hold them tears till I got in the house. Right. You know what I mean? And that's from anything. Got in the house and by yourself. And by and exactly. by myself. Yeah. And by myself. Because I get in the house, my dad, why you, why crying? you crying? What you crying for? Yep. Stop crying. Exactly. Stop crying. You know what, what I mean? You? Uh nah. Nah, you couldn't like we if I cried, bro, it was like I'm almost dying. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. I got, yeah. You, you had to be you like, have to be. It was like, oh man, like look at your arm, bro. You yeah. Like, <sighs> it's falling it's like, off. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's no crying in your arm falling <laughs> off. <laughs> was, there's no crying in you know, living. Right, you yeah, can't yeah. die like this. Like yeah. pull it together. Like oh okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, man, so it was just like it, it's it's different. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Doing some crazy stuff yeah. when they was younger, you know what I'm saying? But the way we were raised, man, like nah, it, it, you it, you had to be almost dying, you know what I'm saying? Like especially as it pertains to sports or being in your neighborhood, because it was like that was gonna follow you, bro, until right. you did something stupid you to was, prove everybody that you, you wasn't was a kid soft. That cried. Yeah, yeah, like you you had to prove that you wasn't soft. Like when I was in seventh grade, bro, we was doing an Oklahoma drill. Yeah. Oh Jesus. This kid, <laughs> this kid, With him? This kid oh, bro, this kid named Black Frank, man, they laid us head to head. They blew the whistle. He dropped the ball on me. Bro, by the time I stood up, he was already coming. I was like, did he lay down? Did, he, did y'all make him lay down? Yeah. And then I, when I stood up, I stood up. Yeah. And he had a low center of gravity. Bro, he, it, was, it was the perfect tackle. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Face mask right in the center of your chest. Yeah. Arms wrapped around. So now... What you got? Nothing. At all. Bro, I hit the ground, knocked the wind out of me. I ain't want to cry, but I, bro, that was the only way to get oxygen out of my body. That was like, literally the only like, way to the get. The first time you get the wind knocked out of you, bro, you bro, feel you like you about You don't know what to do. Dying, you you, you want to stay down. People like, stand up. Put your arms up. Like, shut up. Don't talk to me. Like, uh, give me CPR. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. you, like, so now the rest of the season, you trying to prove I was I, I really didn't cry. Yeah. So now you doing stupid. You trying to jump over people. You running over everybody else. Kids. Extra stuff. Yeah, you extra. So it was like back to your warrior. Yeah. I can't. You can't be vulnerable. That that's like letting your letting them tears out at the, at that age is the most vulnerable you can be. And now I see kids cry, man. Like I ain't yeah. getting no tick. I ain't getting the game. Yeah, my son. And they cry. You like. All right. That's it. Okay. I respect that. But come on, let's talk about it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Now you want to try to talk it out with them and try to calm them down more than anything else. But like, bro, like we we literally internalized Everything. all this stuff. Everything. And then we came into adulthood and you meet a girl and she like, tell me how you feel. You like, what? Please. Bro, so, do you want, you really want me to tell <laughs> So, what about you? So, I want to tell you, like, how it manifested in my life. Okay. So, my grandmother passed away in 2015. Okay. And that was like, like I even wrote, I wrote a poem to her after she passed. She was the peace in my life. Anytime something was going on, I was running to her house. People wouldn't even know where I was at. Mm -hmm. I'd be at, on her couch, chilling. So she passed away and went down back to where she's from, Sparta, Georgia. And the oh. whole time, I'm in Canada. Flew down, uh, came down to Sparta. 
I'm like, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. But I'm like, looking back, why did I even? Why is that even a why thought? Why you feel like you had to feel like that? Man, I got all the way to the repass, and her body was was in the room. And as soon as I stepped in the room, everything fell out of me. Yeah. And I ran out of that place and ran around the back of the house so nobody would see me cry. cry. Yeah. <clears throat> to me, it's like, why is that instilled to us that we can't be seen vulnerable? Why we can't? Why can't we cry in front of you, especially when it's something that's that close to your heart, that that tight to you? Why is that something? And, and, and nobody might even say anything to me because they understand. Yeah. But me inside was like, don't cry, bro. Got up and spoke at the at the funeral. Ball my eyes out, but fighting it the whole time. Why? Yeah. Just let the emotion flow in and let it out. Because honestly, once you let it out, you feel so much better. Right. But we fight ourselves so hard so to do it. At what age did you think it was okay to cry? Like yesterday. I about to say. Because look, the book. it was so. Uh, go ahead. So me, so as I was saying, growing up, right? But that's as a child, I couldn't. Um, I'm gonna tell you my first time where I just I couldn't hold it back and I'm soft. And it was of course it was a girl. Yeah. First time. Dude, I'm crying at school in the hall. Yeah. And my friend like cuz you know like I wasn't a follower. I was always a leader. So other dudes looking at me like, "Damn, I got any crying, you know, like, you know, it, yeah. it, it's got to be okay, right? right?" But I got that from my first time seeing my dad cry. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so that let me know, like, oh, it's okay it's to cry. Yeah, so since good. then, so I'm going to say, like, ninth grade, I've been, I I haven't had a problem. You don't like, mind crying? I didn't mind. Yeah? Yeah. It's not even but a second thought? Not even a second thought. That's pretty good, man. And it's more so because of, like, I grew up religious, right? Yeah. Church. Like, hey, what the point he said on, on the movie? When the spirit moved me. Yeah. You know, it yeah. really, it get me sometimes, yeah. you feel yeah. I cry. Um... I'm not really a crier off of death though. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know why. I ain't figured that out yet, but not really over death, but more so like emotional, you know, emotional stuff. Like I've cried I've cried in the shower by myself in college, man, because I ain't really know like what my next move happen. was gonna be. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that was a point in life too, like, man, like, I don't that know what up. I'm about to yeah. do. That shake up. You know what I mean? So yeah. did you uh-uh. do that in in front of but did did anybody see you? Nobody saw me. Then, um, few times, you know, church people see you, yep. but everybody's doing it. You know, um, the the, the, <laughs> the girlfriend situation, yeah, it was kind of embarrassing. But I think with the vulnerability thing, it's like opening up to, you know, like to you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Not necessarily a cry. Yeah. Just letting you know, like, Brandon, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Nah, Brandon, are you okay? I need to be able to be like, bro. No. Yeah. Like my my dude, I'm to really like go I'm going detail. through. You you know yeah. what I mean? Like I think that's what we have a lot of trouble with also. I agree. Yeah. Hundred percent. I feel like you still got you got to find people because we have trouble trusting. A cry is easy. Yeah. Like that's that's the easy part. Oh, that ain't now, easy. like that's that's the easy part. Man, Crying was... right now is way more easier than coming to my friend. Yeah. And, and talking to him about what I got going on. Well, that's good because it was two months ago. I was watching a video uh, on ESPN about a uh, a walk on. Yeah. Went through all his stuff, got his scholarship. He was crying like a baby. I started tearing up, and I fought it. Nobody's even here. I got I got one for you. I got one better. Right? <laughs> what you got? I, listen, this this is embarrassing though. I, mean, I, I hold it back every time. You ever seen um? Extreme home makeover. Yeah. Oh man, listen. The the family like man. they be going through it. So yeah. Listen, I'm at home by myself. Yeah. I'm watching it, and you know it's a sad story. Everything you know, they were like move that bus, man. They move the bus, and the kids and everybody was crying, and I'm like. Man, I'm be tripping. Like, bro, I couldn't even. Like, I had to, you feel me? I should have. Yeah. I could have. Nobody was there, but it was that moment. Like, hold on, brother. Like, yeah. I'm tripping. Bro, but listen, yeah, that's that's crazy. For me, last time you cried, man. Man, babies and old people, bro. Like little kids. Like so, uh, you know, how, on, even on even on game <laughs> on game day, like you know how they do the story. They may go, oh, yeah, they like go, go a little yeah, bit deeper yeah, in somebody's yeah, life. Yeah, and like uh, when you see like. 
Like it'll be a player and they 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 built this friendship with a kid at a hospital, and then the kid be sick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like, ah. but the kids like like we talked about the other day at the field. Kids still still living yeah, their life. Yeah, they still yeah, happy, yeah, smiling, they, they playing, and happy, then they be like, right and three days later, you like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Like because it's like these kids haven't seen a glimpse into their life. Yeah, right? it's so much they want like. To literally, see. all they know is playing, and my mommy and my but, daddy. But like he asked, "Have you done that in front of anybody?" Yeah, I've, I've done it. Okay, I've done it. Um, it was it was um because I, I first of all I don't mind crying. Well, you're not like, so tough, I guess. Yeah, no, I'm not told. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you know, like, the way I see it is, like... We're better than the generation it, before. It, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I, think, I think it's just pretty human. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think yeah. it's just a human emotion. And I, people always... And, like, like for me, because, you know, everybody got into signs and astrological signs mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, they like, yeah. oh, man, cancers are so emotional. I'd be like, yeah. I think I'm as emotional as any other human being. You know what I'm saying? Cancer? Yeah. No. So, no, it ain't... No, bro, it's different. But... <laughs> no, it's different. <laughs> I, I just I feel like for me, okay, I'm just as emotional as any other human being. I don't think I spazzed out. Like y'all ain't never seen me just act out. Nah, but that don't mean you don't. Yeah, I don't. I <laughs> don't. I, but I, I also you don't operate really differently. You gonna scare a lot of people. But <laughs> but, I, but but I, but <laughs> I, I also <laughs> but but I, I I operate a little bit different too. But I just think I think I'm just as emotional as any other person. Um, uh, I ain't trying to hide nothing. Like, man, at the end of the day, man, you sit on that stuff and you end up having a heart attack. You do. Yeah. That's so, why I say a cry is way easier than me talking to Than the a communication friend. part. But when I should, though, because I, you, I'm sure we all do. I hold a lot of stuff in. Yeah. Man. A lot of stuff that I should be talking to somebody about. But me and my guys, we do this thing on group me. We do a, um, a mental check, mental yeah. health check, you know, uh, Life, you know, marriage or whatever else, you know, you, you, you and we do, we rate ourselves and we talk about it a little bit. Yeah. You know what cool. I mean? Y'all so, got that from uh, IMF? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. And it, it helps, you know what I mean? Because we just, and if nobody would have asked, we wouldn't have known because we don't give that, you know, right, I'm right. not just going to put in the group, hey man, let me tell you, you know. Like you bro, know, having a bad day today. And once, you know, it's like, well, why yours is a, a four? Like, what's going on? You get into it, like, we would have never known that one of our friends was, like, at the end of his, you know, like, relationship, kind of. And, you know, we kind of reeled him back in, let him know some things he need to do and, you know, he need to do for himself. And it worked. You know what I mean? So, but we don't know if, if don't nobody ask, and it shouldn't be like that. That's probably a better question than how you doing. Because it's so easy to just be like, I'm cool. I'm, I'm good. I'm That's easy. I'm good. But if I tell you, give me, rate yourself. Yeah, I mean, if you three say three categories, if you say three, that means something. Something, something. Up. and we say and 10, we have to talk about. Hey, look, you say ten. Why are you at a ten? Why you at a I want to know. Yeah, I want to know why you at a ten. Because I want to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a conversation starter, and, and we have to talk about it. And real friends don't let you just you a three now. Nah, hey, no, just be out here yeah, right now. Nah, yeah, you can't. We got that. You got to pull your people back off the edge. Yeah, and people be more so embarrassed about that too. But see, the thing about that is, and I realized this, like, men, you done had financial conversations. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people are ashamed of their finances. They're ashamed of, you know, relationship statuses and all that stuff. And so what it does for me, it, it lets you realize, like, you ain't the only one. Yeah. Like, if, even if you're not like that right now, you used, you to, used be. to be. Or, yep. or you come out of it. Yeah, or, you know what I mean? Or, or it's you like could be possibly walking right into you're it. You're thinking you're the only person going through this. You yeah. think you're the only person living check to check. You think you're the only person who got their lights cut off. You think you're the only person whose relationship is falling apart. You're not. Right. So, you know, especially a friend. Because I pretty much act the same all the time. And I talk about people at work like that. Like, they come in with different attitudes. Yeah. I don't. To me, I don't think that's, uh, let's go to book, manly. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. A man's supposed to be even you, cute. Even I cute. just think that's in me. Yeah. Right? Don't bring your personal into work. To work. Don't yeah. bring work to home. Like, yeah. I, I, just, I was, just I was be the same. Too. But, you know, you in order to be that way, though, and then not bogging you down, is you have to open up to somebody. Right. So. Uh, that's definitely something that. 
I myself want to work on. Like I'm, I'm not actually an introvert. I know we on the field. I probably don't look like it, but I don't really talk unless no, I know unless somebody comes and talks to me. I can sit in a room. I did it this this past weekend and not talk to anybody. I'm cool. There's nothing wrong. I'm straight. Yeah. But when it is something wrong, my response also is I'm straight. But it's the same. Yeah, but yeah. when something's wrong, I should be able to be like, "Hey, B man, I'm going through this." Yeah. And we've had conversations. We've been better where, with that. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We've had conversations. I think where it's I, tough to talk to Brandon. I think it's tough to talk. You to You have me. to know who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> but I you have to know. To I'm, I'm gonna tell. You, I'm gonna tell you why it's tough to talk to me. Because I don't know how to say a lot of things. Yeah. W- w- without without it being on a comical end. Sometimes, like, or it could be just I think, too I think forward. Got, I think he got to switch to yeah, turn the comedy yeah. off. No, but yeah. you definitely come straight at it, and that's that's fine. Honestly. Bro, yeah. let, let's talk about the first time I met. <laughs> you two. No, we, we talked about a crowd. <laughs> This is dealing with my emotions. This is real though. Because oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. I was sad. <laughs> right? I was sad. So, hey, you made it through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we here. Like, <laughs> what, what happened? Did I drop a pass or something? I don't know. You walked on the field. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I, just, I was breathing on a Sunday. You were too big. I woke Wait, up one day, I was breathing, breathing on a Sunday. <laughs> came out and I was just like, and he was like, man, look at this big ass. Like, <laughs> bro, who are you? Right, like, I don't know like, your name. What's your name? like, that was just that was and that was like the introduction to like your first step. This is like your pre your you know what I'm saying like your your introduction to hell with Brandon. Bro. <laughs> it's funny because that day I was trying to like figure out who you were. I was trying to like, hey, what's your name? Just like what you look. Oh, hey, Pee Wee. He uh he like he gonna be a good lineman. Like bro, this dude comes this straight off off the rip. Like bro, you bitch. Bro, 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 bro. But that probably talked about his nose on the first day. That bro. tells me a lot about. That person also, right? Because I'm going to always be me. Like, I'm... That's a fact. Of course, I'm, you know, I'm a jokester, I'm all that. <laughs> but I also, like, I can be serious too, a yeah. lot of times. So, if I come at you like that, and you know you come a different way, I know where I'm at with yeah, you. Yeah, I can't play with I you. Ain't like really, yeah, you know, I, can, I, I can't really... I can't get you. I'm going to be cool with yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know I what I mean? It. So, I get it. that's, that's kind of what that is. And, you know, look at us, man. If I would have never did that, hey, man... You'll probably be off the team. No, I think he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still I think sad. he'd be good. Right? Well, yeah, I think he'd be good. Every Sunday, I show up and you're there. I'm sad. Oh, shit. I got to quit. As we <laughs> as we come to the close of this conversation, is there any other topics that, that really stuck out to you that the people really need to hear about uh, from this book, Battle Cry? Yes. Um. So, it was one section where he said that Oh man, you need to show your masculinity and also um it was like God dog, I can't even think of it. Uh, I think I was talking about it was basically it was basically t- he was telling you one thing but then telling you not to do it. So I was like, okay, I'm confused. Yeah. Cause he it was like knowing when to stand up for yourself and when to like back off. Yeah. Yeah. When when he talked about it in the Bible, how it was like uh like if a man slaps you. There we to, go. Then to turn the other cheek. I didn't understand that. So because like, he was basically saying you have to know when to do it. No, I don't. I'm doing it every time. So I, I just I didn't agree with that part. I, I you think you I do remember the the gist of it. I don't know word for word, but I do think you have to have some discernment in whatever happens to you because like we were just part of an incident, uh, incident on on Saturday where this dude was in the wrong. And he he approached one of the young ladies in our group wrong. And the first thing a couple of dudes in the, in the group did, they were swinging or trying to swing. But if you think about where we were, what the situation is, you're not in your city, the potential of going to prison over an instance that really wasn't escalated yet, then you like, all right, did I need to escalate the situation? And there's some instances where you like, all right, checked all my boxes, I'm out. Yeah. But you, I feel like you have to go through that that process of like, what is gonna happen yeah. if I do this? Because you have a you have a wife, you have a house, you have two children that to, to think about it all times. So I think we have to go through that thought process and then act. Seems like you you fight me. I am. What you got? I wish I could just. I wish I could quote it word for word. But 
Okay, it's, it's, I think it's the point for me of when. Because that's, that's what he was saying. Like, it's okay for you to do it, but you shouldn't do it. Like, da 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 da. Yeah. I, I, I get it because there are times where you have to stand down. Um, I, for me. He was saying don't be too tough, kind of. Yeah. Like, that's what he's saying? Yeah. yeah. But I don't think it's being too tough. I think it's like, I think it, I take think it's it just up for yourself. Picking, I think it's just picking and choosing your battles, too. That I think also. It's, it's, is knowing when to let that out, right? Right. Like, because it's, it's one thing if somebody walk up to you in a parking lot and say something just completely out of line. But then, like, his example was he was work, he was at work and something happened at his job and his boss called him in and just went off on him. Yeah. And he was like, I had to just kind of stand there and eat it. You know what I'm saying? That's a good example. In, yeah. in real, like, outside of your work environment, somebody started going at you like that, you flare up, you talk loud, you walk back towards them, right? As a man, right? Supposed to. But, Supposed to. But but is that always the best decision? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But it, it but especially not in your work environment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like your boss get to talking crazy. You just got it. That is that time when you either just eat it or you respond according to your situation. Yeah. Especially. Okay. So well, I think I, I think I have to just figure out the win. I said, what do you think and, about and, sticks and stones? Somebody say something to you. No, I don't. Does it really words, matter? Words don't really. Words don't really get me. So what gets you? Don't touch me. All right, that's cool. That's because that, that's legit. That's that's slapping in the face and turning <laughs> other cheek, brother. Listen. Well, but but he but he went into a deeper explanation. No, he did. Yeah, and he did. which I which I understood the explanation of it, but it was and, and we and I also think this man is like. Third degree black belt, you know yeah, what I mean. So if he, so kind of if he turning up, hey, just, you know, I just I was just listening to Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan was saying that every man needs to be able to have some type of physical self defense because that pre- that actually prevents you from getting in situations because yeah. I know I can handle uh, this. Yeah. So it's like, like we have to have that that bravado that that man in us so we don't necessarily just flail off at, at the wind on, on anything. See, it's, it's more so that I know, but I want you to know too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... You know what I mean? I gotta get rid of that part. I got you. It's kind of like, you, you ever had a situation, man, when you get into it with somebody and like, y'all might even be like, actually, then grabbed on each yeah. other and yeah. you just grab them and show them you like, and buddy be like, I, bet, yeah, I got you, bet. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I see I what it is. I don't, I don't know. I'm not that big, so no, you probably had that more than me. Yeah. <laughs> but but it don't even, sometimes it don't even take, take, take that. Sometimes it just be showing them that like, but really, nah, yeah, it, I can't, it, it I can get to it this. Yeah, yeah, it can get to this. And yeah. I think sometimes like they just need to know like, okay, like I see Buddy, he he can go from zero to ten he, real quick. Yeah. So let me and he'll stand let me play. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I think sometimes it's just knowing your situation. And, and like you said, just kind of weighing everything out. Like, is it worth it? Like it, and 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 that was what he talked about. He was like, our mind processes so much stuff. Right. Like his, his example was um, when in um, the in the Avengers movie, when Doctor Strange went into the future and saw yeah. how all he it was like fourteen million different yeah. ways yeah. the way everything was there supposed was to play out. One way, and it was only one way for them to live. Yeah. But. When he came back and did it, everybody was like, "Damn, what are you doing?" Yeah, he had already seen like his. It was, but that's how our minds that's literally process everything. That's actually how we have everything. to operate. Like, all right, we if I do this, this yeah, if like, I do that, that happens. Exactly. I, I always, when he said it, I thought about um, uh, what's one man, Robert Downey Jr. in the uh, Sherlock Holmes movie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he, he was he always thinking about yeah. what the fight is going to look like before mm-hmm. it even happens. Exactly. And I feel like we have to have a, a sense of that. I mean, it's not going to happen exactly step by step, but we got to have some force. <laughs> I stepped to the uh, right. I, 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 I follow this dude. <laughs> I follow this kid. On I already do that. that Before any fight, <laughs> yeah, nah, bro, I'm about to push him over this box. I'm gonna jump up like, <laughs> yeah, like, cause I'm gonna hit you first. You're not gonna hit me first, you know. But I do have one more. Um, and right. we can wrap it up. Um, putting putting it with his wife. Uh, the story he told about being in Atlanta. They had strippers there. He went in the room. Now. Not putting yourself in a crazy situation when it comes to women. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel like, honestly, because of, like, at the core, I'm a man. 
and I've got urges, I've got needs, I've got to remove myself. Like that's the best, that's the best prophylactic is not to be there. So knowing, and it's, it's all about what kind of man you're trying to grow into. Mm -hmm. So knowing who I'm trying to be, the best solution is to not be there. So I understand him removing himself. He made her change her life. She and when they had that, they had that talk, <laughs> the talk, yeah. yeah. But to me, I don't, I don't think I have that. I don't have that. Yeah. So but my but best. You know, I, that was what I was saying. Like he was at a different place in his walk. Yeah. Like Agreed. as far as his relationship with God. That, like, let's see. When we were talking before, before the camera, I'm like, it was a few things, man. I'm like, all right, now, brother, <laughs> you just gonna be the only one yeah. in heaven. <laughs> like, Some, sometimes, it's, man. It's, when people be at a different place and they walk, you you still you still see yourself right here. Yeah. And you kind of visualize we all right here, right? And then it'll be your one homeboy and be like, nah. I'm a, I don't really talk about it, but I'm actually over yeah, here. Yeah, so yeah. uh But yeah. see the thing that we gotta always remember is where we see him is not who they've always been. No, that's so fact. so he at one point of his life might have not with it. done might, have, might, have watched, might have watched you know at least might have yeah. might have <laughs> dove in yeah. but not not putting that on him but yeah, yeah, no. he had grown to a place and experienced enough in his life and interpreted enough yeah. learned enough where he was able to make that decision because that's all it was a decision it was I'm not it was a, growth, a very man. a very a very 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 strong decision a strong strong like i said i very. i'm out of there very very yeah. strong decision. Drive around two eighty five for now. Oh uh, yeah, man. <laughs> in a circle. In a circle. Yeah. Circle. Uh, yeah. But that's that's that was it for me. Yeah. Byron. Uh, nah, man. I think we touched on a lot, especially that uh, the affirmation, man. I think that's big because I think um, I know I'm like, like I even joke with my friends. They'd be like, yo, like I see them chicks that be commenting under blah blah blah, and I'd be like. I just feel like, honestly, the next comment is just to try to outdo the comment above. Well, so I never take it serious. I yeah. never take any, I don't take any of it. It's the genuine part, right? So <clears throat> I feel like I got to get better about being accepting and just saying thank you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like understanding that people actually probably do feel this way about a right. person. So I, I think that's a part of what I'm struggling and trying to grow into, I guess. Yeah. I feel it, man. For me, it was the communication thing is, is huge for me. I'm I'm still working on learning how to communicate. What's as an introvert, I think all the time, but I got to be able to communicate how I feel and how I think to the world, always in always with love in it. Um, but that's where I took, that's what I took away from this book is communication on, on what you're really going through and how that can help enhance who you are instead of it. Cause I mean I've I've seen holding it in what it feels like, what it can result in. So me being able to express myself consistently and getting it out, even if it's not necessarily like to my wife or or if it's just a phone call to one of y'all two, and just I, I called one of my partners one day I was going through something and I was like what do you think about this? I got this perspective and it helped me through it. So just being able to do that on a consistent basis to help continue to grow and become the man that I'm trying to be. It makes sure you call the right people too. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, definitely. That's that's. that's yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know, I know my friends who not to call. Exactly. They gon' man. All that. Hey, <laughs> nah, I don't, nah, need, I don't, yeah, don't need yeah, that right yeah, now. Exactly. I need yeah. somebody that, yeah, is gonna ground. Me. But I appreciate both of y'all for joining me on the huddle today. This has been an amazing <laughs> conversation <laughs> to dive into an amazing book. Um, and I really hope to have both of y'all again. This has been the huddle. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. All love. Uh, Peace. You and you'll be unique. You trying to be like him. You must be mistaken.